it's only only during the first week. Last week, I I couldn't conduct the class because I had COVID, oh. and I was I was uh having having a sore throat, so I couldn't speak much. Okay, so there's only one recording so far. Let me just share this, so you can see where you can access the recording. Eh? Okay, so in your Microsoft Teams, uh, here. So either you can click here, but you can also go to files and there's a folder for recording. Okay, so here you can click and this will show the recording from last week. Okay. Uh, and please also be aware of your assignments. Yeah, so your assignments are here. So I've already assigned basically for this uh, course there will be two two assignments. It will be a individual assignment where you have to review an article, and then a term paper where you have to go through uh, reports on what are the social economic impact of COVID nineteen and what were the policy responses. Okay, so there's a lot of reports that are that is available. So the 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 your task is basically to to write in your own words. Okay, so you can gather all the different informations from different reports, but rewrite it in your own words and also cite it. Okay, uh, yeah, refer to re uh, uh, provide the reference for which report that you have referred to. Okay, uh, yeah, so this is where you can access the class materials. In the class materials, we have the slides. Uh, the textbook is here. Okay, so there's two textbooks. And also your course outline is here. Okay, so you just go through this course outline and also the, the, the assignments are here as well. Okay, so you can access all of it under this folder. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me just proceed with the lecture. Okay, so yes, the slides for this week uh, for today have already uploaded. So we'll try to cover as much as possible for the two topics. OK. Um, OK, so for 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 the first topic. That will be covered today. Can you see the, the, the screen, the slides? Is it OK? Yeah. OK. Um, and one more, oh, one more thing before I forget. Huh? Uh, just remind me if I uh, didn't start the recording because just now I, I almost forgot. Okay, uh, just remind me, and then also um, uh, I need some feedback as well. Sometimes I will stop and just ask you if you can hear me or not. Okay, because sometimes the the microphone doesn't work, and I will uh, end up talking to myself. Okay, so. Hopefully you can um, help me with that. OK, so let's proceed. <clears throat> OK, so. We've covered basically for last week, the introduction of of economics. OK, um, so for this week, what we'll do is we'll just go through the market system and circular flow. And then if we have time, we we'll look at uh, demand and supply. OK, so market system is basically uh let's just see here. okay so the topics here uh that i'll try to cover is basically number one is looking at what are the economic systems okay number two is laissez-faire i think munira should should know this this word this is, it's a french word um and then the command system market system and then the five fundamental questions related to principles of economics and number six is circular flow. OK. Uh, OK, uh, I want I want your your feedback on this. OK, what do you think is an economic system? Maybe Brother Mahmoud, can you try to answer? What what is an economic system? Just on top of your head, try to answer. Brother Mahmoud, are you there? 
Yeah, yeah. What is it? What is an e economic system from your perspective? You don't have to Google it just on top of your head. So economic system. Just a system of. Producing some resources and at half views. <laughs> How about economics? What do you think is economics? We actually covered this last week, but I just wanted to see your perspective. What is economics? Uh, I actually don't have an idea. Anything maybe related to Muamalat? What do you think is economics? You've heard a lot and you maybe pronounce uh, economics quite a lot. But what, what is the meaning of it? OK, I'll come back to you. How about uh, system uh, system Munira? What is it? What is an economic system? Maybe the circulation of money. Circulation of money in the society. OK. Uh, uh, Sundus, Sister Sundus, what is it? What is an economic system? We um, we we discussed last week economics, but what is a, a economic system? It's a distribution of goods and services. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's um, more close to the definition of economics, but it's okay. Uh, how about uh, Sister Amira? What is an economic system? Uh, system that control, like Sister Sundu said, that any produce, any service, the system that control everything mm. of the produce for the service. Okay. Okay, I think that it's a, those are quite good answers. Okay, so I think if you look at the word uh, system, right? You can maybe relate it to to uh, computer system, right? So if you look at a computer system, it is basically made out of different components or parts. Okay, uh, for example, the computer we have uh, the monitor, we have the CPU, we have the keyboard, we have the graphic card, we have the S, uh, SSD, right? So these different components come together and make up that system okay uh, and if one part of the system is ruined or malfunctions it can cause the whole system to crash okay uh, and if you look at the computer system there are basically different types of system right so i think the most famous one is the windows system okay so they have different components and um uh software for a windows system but there's also the uh mac uh what is it apple system i i don't know I, i'm not using apple so that's another type of system but it is also a computer system right but it's a different system so other types of system is like the linux system the ubuntu system so that's also part of a computer system Right, so similarly, uh, an economic system, okay, it has, it is made out of different components, okay, and the different components come together to make that system, okay. So if you look at the definition, okay, so basically that system is made out of different components that we call institutions, okay. And these institutions come together uh, through different arrangements, okay, different agreements, different regulations, and that forms the system. Okay, so similarly, if you look at a computer system, uh, an, uh, a component from Apple may not be compatible for a component for Windows, okay, because they do not have the similar arrangements that can work with each other. 
Okay, so only if they have an ar arrangement that both agree upon, then they can be part of the system. Okay, so that system is basically used. The, the objective, right, is to to coordinate the 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 objectives of economics. Okay, so as we uh, learned last week, okay, it is all about distribution of resources. Okay, how do you distribute? Okay, so the resources that we have is um, the land. Okay, just just uh, a refresher: land, labor, capital, and also entrepreneurship. Okay, so this is the resources that we seek to distribute or redistribute through economic system. Okay, so the way that we distribute may be different from one another. Okay, and this difference you can argue is the different types of systems that a country adopts. Okay. So the difference exists because of mainly because of the degree of decentralized use of markets and prices in decision making. Okay, so decentralized means that there is no one person or one institution that makes the decisions for markets and prices. Okay, so it is there is a different degree depending on the system that that country uses. Okay, so maybe for uh, countries like uh, North Korea, the government or the decision making is more centralized to Kim Jong Un. Okay, in in terms of how he how the the economic system works, he sets the market uh, prices and also what are the resources that should be distributed. In that country, okay, um, and also this relates to as well degree of centralized government control. So, how much does the government come into the economic system to determine what is the uh, prices in the market and what are the resources that uh, should be distributed and how should it be distributed? Okay, so this is what we call economic system. Okay, so there's different types of economic system which we will look at uh, now. Okay, so on one extreme, <clears throat> on one extreme, okay, you can argue now the term is, this is a, a left leaning uh, uh, ideology, okay, the ideology on the, on the left, uh, whereby it is called laissez-faire. Am I, am I pronouncing this right, Sister Munira? Laissez-faire? Yes, Martin. Okay, so laissez-faire, capitalism. What does it mean, Sister Munira? Not sure. Are you sure? Is it, it means not sure? <laughs> no, I don't know. Okay, now it means let it be. Let it be. Okay, meaning that um, it is a, uh, the ideology where there should be no government intervention in the market. The government shouldn't intervene. So everyone, all the market players will determine what happens in terms of the distribution of resources, what happens to the price. It is all left to the market. Okay, so government should just let the market be, let it be. Okay, so this is uh, the ideal economy that is proposed by Adam Smith, okay, uh, in his famous book, The Wealth of Nations, okay, where he argues that the the individual, sorry, he argues that the individual self interest and division of labor will make the uh, make result to social benefit, okay, because if the uh, if the individual pursues his self-interest, which is profit maximization, 
they will eventually this situation will eventually lead to the ideal economy okay because everyone will try to uh, maximize for their own benefit right so for example if a seller he tries to sell uh, his goods in the market right so let's say he he's, he wants to sell his goods in the market for 10 ringgit Okay, but then the government intervenes. The government says, no, you have to only sell it for five ringgit. So because of that, the seller cannot get a good profit. Okay, so in a laissez-faire capitalism, the seller can decide on whatever price that he wants to sell. Okay, but at the same time, the buyer can also decide whether or not he wants to buy that product. Okay, so if the seller puts it at 10 ringgit, but no one wants to buy it, then at the end, he has to reduce his price, okay, without the government intervening, okay. So it, because it is for his self-interest to reduce the price. If he doesn't reduce the price, no one buys from him, okay. So when he reduces the price, then eventually someone buys from him, and that can lead to an ideal economy where the interaction, the free interaction between the buyer and seller will determine the market price in the economy. Okay, so the main principle for this ideology is that for the for it uh, for for us to keep the government from interfering with the economy. Okay, the 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 power of the government is just needed to number one to protect private property from theft and also to provide a legal environment for contract enforcement. Okay, so this is the what we call the most extreme on the left uh, as the laissez-faire or sometimes we call it as capitalism system. Okay, so this is also a system where we seek to distribute economic resources. Okay, so this is one way, one system. Okay, uh, and part of that, okay, uh, as popularized by Adam Smith, because we, we, as I mentioned just now, in terms of how the prices are determined, okay, just now the, the, the seller tries to sell it at 10 ringgit, but because no one buys it, he has to move his hand, uh, he has to move the price down. Okay, so this is what we call but uh, this is what Adam Smith called as the invisible hand who moves the price down. Okay, so there must be uh, a force that moves it down. Okay, so the force of the invisible hand is determined by the profit seeking producers, determined by the needs of the society, uh, and, and this will uh, eventually lead to it being met. And then the, the government should not get involved. And then the competition keeps quality high, okay? Because when there is free market, okay, let it be because if there's no government intervention, anyone can enter and exit the market. Anyone can enter the market to sell, anyone can enter the market to buy, and anyone can exit the market, okay? So you, you imagine the markets that you have, okay? In Malaysia, we have the Pasar Malam, okay? The night markets, okay? And I think in Ramadan, we'll have the Bazaar, Ramadan Bazaar. So imagine if anyone can freely buy and sell there or anyone can uh, become a seller there. Okay, so there will be a lot of competition if you are a seller. Okay, if you are selling, uh, uh, what's a, uh, during Ramadan Bazaar, one of the most popular is, is the Roti John. Okay, the Roti John. So if everyone sells Roti John there, eventually it will lead to a lower price of the roti john and a higher quality of the roti john because there's a lot of sellers so the the buyers will choose the best quality with the lowest price okay but if let's say the government intervenes to say okay no only two roti john sellers should be in the market then it will limit the competition and the buyers can only choose between two okay so if there is a competition then the quality will be high and also competition will keep prices low okay and also competition and self-interest act as an invisible hand that regulates the free market
Okay, so there is a, you call it uh, indirect um, uh, force that will determine the, the price in the market. Okay, so this force is called the invisible hand. Okay, however, there's also the danger of where there is a void of values in the individual uh, in in the invisible hand for example here the 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 example that i put here in the in the picture where there is a, a situation where um because of the capitalism or not uh, less government intervention or no government intervention where the system can create a lot of houses but the houses are left unsold okay and the system can also create a lot of people that cannot afford to buy these houses okay so this is i think this uh, is most famous in in the united states during the global financial crisis in 2010 where there was a lot of homes without people and there was a lot of homeless people as well okay so that then this may then justify an intervention to come in okay uh, so but this is just an example of the dangers of leaving the market be okay uh, i'm just showing the example of a of the system okay um, but also there's also a danger where the government comes to intervene the government comes to intervene but intervene for the benefit of the few or for the benefit of the capitalists okay so that's also a danger as well not it's not always the case where the government intervenes and it can benefit the people okay so in this case this is just a this is a, a um a picture of a newspaper it's in malay uh, that where where the government comes and intervenes but helps the home developers okay instead of helping the people okay so this is uh, something that you can also try to apply for other cases as well okay uh, so that is the left extreme okay the left extreme uh, the 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 right extreme okay, there's there's a left and there's a right okay is what we call as the command system okay so uh, the command system, some people also call it as socialism or communism. Okay, so this is where there is an extreme government involvement in the economic system. Okay, uh, and in most cases, the government would own most of the resources. Okay, the land, labor, capital, and also the ability for entrepreneurship is owned by the government okay and they are the ones that decide where the resources are distributed okay in terms of who for example i think uh, countries like north korea they decide for their citizens you have to work in this area and you have to produce this and you uh, will be paid this much okay so there's there's no deciding there's no free will for the individual to work in what area okay so it is all based on what the government decides and then the government uh, determines uh, how the resources are being uh, distributed okay so this is also an economic system it's just a different economic system okay this is the most extreme uh, on the right is the command system okay so some countries that we still have in existence is north korea uh, cuba not maybe not not as much uh, myanmar under the usually under authoritarian or dictatorship the governments this is where the government uh, uses this system okay um and if you look uh, this is a more clear um example okay so basically on the left the most extreme is capitalism okay and then moving more towards the right uh, is socialism and uh, the the most extreme on the right is communism okay but of course there are 
areas in between capitalism and socialism as well, and also areas between socialism and communism as well. Okay, so basically, as you move, you move to the right in this chart. It is basically uh, representing more government intervention. Okay, intervention, government involvement in the economic system. Okay, so more to the right, the more government comes in. Okay, so on the the most extreme on the left, the government doesn't intervene at all. Okay, it's just the role of the government to pro to provide uh, protection and also provide regulation. Okay. Um. Yeah, and then in the middle, in between those, the the capitalism in between laissez-faire capitalism and also command system, there is what we call the market system. Okay, so the market system is a mix. Okay, so this is, this is the keyword. Okay, a mix of decentralized decision making with some government control. Okay, so you can argue that a majority of countries in this world use this system. Okay, whereby the market itself is uh, given some uh, freedom to operate on its own and usually the government just comes once in a while to control. Okay, um, and basically in this system, the private markets are, are the most dominant. Okay, and there is uh, private ownership of resources whereby individuals and um, uh, individual uh, institutions also can own resources. So it is not owned by the government. Okay, the land labor capital is not owned fully by the government, but you can have uh, individuals owning it as well. And everyone basically acts in their own, in their own for their own self-interest. Okay, so if we look at it from the from the economic perspective, self-interest here means that everyone seeks to maximize their profit. Okay, so even as a buyer, for example, if you can go buy something and uh, for example, if you uh, uh, have been wanting to buy uh, a phone, for example, and the price of the phone is 1000 and you have expected to buy to pay 1000 for it. But when you go suddenly uh, you and you ask, you bargain for it, suddenly the seller sells it to you for, for 800. And so in your mind, that is also a profit for you because you ma you managed to save 200 ringgit. Okay. And of course, you will act on that behavior when the, the, the seller offer to you at 800 ringgit, you will pay him 800 ringgit. Of course, you wouldn't pay 1000, although you expected to pay 1000 right but it's, it, it is for your self interest as well to pay at a lower price okay but as a seller of course you want to also get a lot of profit okay so everyone will try to maximize their own profit in the market okay so that is the the economic aspect of it okay so this is also a, a system okay and basically under the market system, okay, you have private property, you have freedom of enterprise, meaning to say anyone can open a business okay, following the regulation, uh, and also freedom of choice, meaning to say you can, uh, you are free to choose what you want to buy, you are free to choose what you want to sell. Okay, so there's no government forcing you to buy only this or sell only this, okay, or produce only this. Okay, and everyone is acting in their self-interest. And in the market, there's a lot of competition. Usually, if you, uh, for example, if you start to open a business, then if the business is making profit, of course, there will someone else. There will be someone else that also opens a similar business. So that makes uh, a lot more competition. Okay, and basically, because of the competition, uh, the market will determine the price okay more or less unless government comes in and say no you cannot uh, decide the price on your own i will decide the price 
Okay, so you cannot sell, for example, chicken for more than 10 ringgit. Okay, so that is a uh, government intervention that comes in and sets the prices. Okay, so uh, that these are basically the main characteristics of the market system. Okay, uh, yeah, so you can maybe um, uh, try to see what are the countries that have these different systems or different degrees of uh, government intervention through what we call the index of economic freedom. Okay, so basically the more free the economy, the less the government comes in to intervene. Okay, so there's uh, this uh, this uh, index that I think they update. Let's try to see. They update every year. The index. And so there's the yeah. And so this is the the website you can see. Okay, there's a, they've already uh yeah updated the for 2022. Updating, say loading. It's okay. You can you can you can see later. Okay. Okay. So yeah, this is two thousand twenty. So some, uh, the more greener the the country, the 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 less government intervenes. The more red the country, the more the the the, the government intervenes in the in the in the market in the economic system okay so this is basically representing the different uh, places where the country operates under the different system okay so you can argue that the more left uh, or the, the the more laissez faire okay the, the less government intervenes is usually in the in the in the western countries Okay, and the developing countries or the, the poor countries is more usually there is a lot of uh, more government intervention. Okay, so the findings, this is from 2020. I haven't updated for 2022. Uh, so basically what they found is that citizens of free or mostly free countries are more better off in terms of their well-being. Um, they, there is a link between economic freedom and economic growth. Okay, but also, I, I, as I highlighted just now, economic freedom does not necessarily mean uh, everything is good. Okay, uh, there, there might be situations where uh, there, there are a lot of homes, but a lot of, also a lot of homeless people. Okay, uh, but this is the finding. Okay, people in economically, in economically free societies live longer, enjoy better health, and higher quality social goods. Economic freedom also correlates with more effective democratic governance and stronger rule of law. OK, so you can explore later. Uh, so basically, um, under the market system, it also helps to advance technology and capital goods Okay, because people can freely enter the market and if there's a lot of competition, there's incentive for people to improve the technology and quality of the of 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 the goods that they produce. Okay, and also the system allows for a specialization in terms of what you want to specialize in. Okay, so in a command economy, for example, sometimes people cannot specialize. It's the government that decides. You have to work in this area. Okay, and because of that, maybe there are areas where uh, the government neglects or are not aware of. Okay, but in a market system, people can specialize and the market can determine uh, what is needed and what where are the gaps that can be specialized. Okay, so here there is a division of labor, and also uh, because of that, there are geographic specialization. Okay, depending on the on the industry in that in that uh, area, 
there will be specializations of labor. Okay, so in, in areas where, for example, is rich with oil and gas. So there will be a lot of specialists in oil and gas. Okay, so that's a, uh, the, 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 the outcome of the market system. Okay. Uh, so part of the market system is also um, allows for um, more liquid use of money as a medium of exchange okay um, and also trade okay and this overall can make the the system better off in terms of the outcome okay but there's also shortcomings of the market system okay where um there will be situations and i think most of us are aware okay where there is overproduction of goods with social costs and there will be under production of goods with social benefits okay for example uh, under production of hospitals it is always not enough although hospitals can bring a lot of social benefits and also overproduction of goods with social costs for example uh, cigarettes Okay, so because why? Because the market wants cigarettes, but although it has a social cost, it is still being produced. Okay, so let me just pause for a while. Okay, we'll we'll just pause for Maghrib, okay, and uh, we can continue at eight. Is that okay for everyone? Everyone okay? Clear? It's okay. okay. So we'll continue at eight. Yeah. Yeah, it is okay. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So let's continue. Yeah? <coughs> Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Okay. Yes. Okay, so <coughs> there are also uh, challenges or shortcomings to the to the market system. Okay, and I think we can see this in um, in our respective countries. Okay, most of our countries are in market system uh, where there is uh, overproduction of goods with social costs and also underproduction of goods with social benefits. Okay, uh, so this is a result of the market system where uh, if the government doesn't intervene, okay, um, and also there's a danger of monopoly okay we'll, we'll i think we'll go through the concept of monopoly oligopolies later okay uh, where the pri one private sector or one entity controls uh the resource in the economy okay so there's also still a danger even though it is a market system um so uh basically although it is um, by default, uh, laissez-faire, meaning there is a freedom, but there is still an active role of the government okay, in the market. Okay. Okay, so, um, the government must also may need uh, to to come into the market to help alleviate uh, market failures okay and the government can also come in to help increase the effectiveness of a market system so we'll see uh, maybe a, a few instances where the government um, must come to provide better overall outcome for the market okay however there's also a danger of what we call as government failure, whereby when the government comes and intervene, it actually makes the situation worse. Okay, so that's also the danger or the shortcomings of a market system. Okay, so overall, all these different systems, right? We have we have the laissez-faire or capitalism. We have the command system. Okay, so the command system. You can argue some would say it's communism, some would say it's socialism. Okay, um, basically helps or tries to address the five fundamental questions. Okay, so the five fundamental questions of each system, of any system, of any economic system, is trying to answer this question. Okay, based on the system, based on the situation that uh of the country okay how um or the system that it has okay these are the five questions that it tries to answer okay so number one is what goods and services will be produced by the system okay what goods and services so it can either be determined by the government or it can be left to the market players to determine Okay, what goods and services will be produced in the market? Okay, number two, how will it be produced? Okay, how will it be produced? It, you, once you decide what is produced, then you have to answer how will it be produced? Okay, number three, after you produce it, who will get the goods and services? Will it be used by the citizens of your country or will it be sold to another country? Okay, or is there a certain segment or certain locality that will get the goods and services? Okay, so that is also answered by the system. Number four is how will the system accommodate change? Okay, so if there is, for example, technological change, uh, maybe you can uh, look at the um, internet for example okay um, in most countries they will accommodate the integration of internet in the into the economic system but in some countries for example in north korea it is restricted or in china they have their own 
internet where it is limited or it limits the uh, it, uh, uh, from other from foreign entities or foreign companies to come in. Okay, so there is different uh, accommodations depending on the different system that it is in. Okay, and then number five, how will the system promote progress? Okay, how will the system promote progress? So depending on the system, maybe overall because of it is authoritarian, then the government would want it to remain as it is. So there's no progress. Okay, but uh, in in uh, in a more laissez faire, then anyone can come in and affect the progress. So it depends on the different systems. So different systems basically will answer these questions differently. Okay. So depending on these systems as well, okay, we 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 looked at this uh, last last week. It will also um, affect the production possibility of the economic uh, system. Okay, so if you if you uh, watch uh, if you um, remember last week, this is an example of a country that produces two goods. So either it produces robots or it produces pizzas. Okay, based on the resources that it has, based on the resources that it has, based on the land, labor, capital, and also entrepreneurship, this country produces two goods. Okay, so it has to allocate the land, labor, and capital either to produce robots or to produce pizzas. Okay, so this is a hypothetical situation. Okay, so depending on the allocation, it can produce at A. At A, it produces 10 robots, but it doesn't produce any pizzas because all of the resources are allocated to produce robots. Okay, so that's one possibility. Or it can be B or it can be C. At B, for example, it produces nine robots and one pizza. Okay, so some of the resources has been allocated to produce pizzas, okay? And then depending on the different possibilities, you can draw a production possibility curve. So this is what we call a production possibility curve, okay? And depending, basically depending on the system, okay, this curve can be expanded, can be, can go out, okay? So it can be around here, it can be here. So at different areas, it can produce more robots and more pizzas okay for example where it is uh, depending on the system when it promotes technological changes okay it can expand the production possibility because so similarly similarly all the uh, uh, all the countries in the world can also expand their production possibility based on the um, resources that it has but the the speed of expansion will depend on what type of system that it is operating in. Okay, so you can imagine uh, a computer system as well. Okay, if it has very low RAM, okay, low RAM, maybe two gigs of RAM, it can still operate, but it operates very slowly. Okay, but once you change the component, it upgrade the RAM, for example, from 2 gigs to 8 gigs or now 16 gigs, 32 gigs, then it can operate much faster and it can have a lot more possibility for that computer. Similarly, for the, for the economy as well, if there are components that uh, are hindering the progress, then the whole system will also be hindered in terms of its pos possibility. But if you change the component and make it more fast and efficient, then the, pro the, the possibility for the country will also expand much further. Okay. Yeah, so there, there will be a new production possibility curve depending on the system. Okay. So when we look at the question of what will be produced, okay, usually for a, a market system, or any system, it is always trying to create a profit. Even for common, common, uh, common 
command system. Okay, but usually it is for the for for a command system. It is for the people who are in power, for the elite. Okay. Um. But in a market economy, it is basically all the individual market players that is trying to uh, maximize their own profit. Okay. So profit is basically the difference between revenue. Okay, revenue minus cost. Okay, so people will try to maximize their revenue and reduce the cost okay, to, in, to, to get the profit. Okay. Uh, in a, a market system, in a market system, the, the question of what will be produced, okay, the question of what will be produced will be determined by what we term as consumer sovere sovereignty, okay, sovereignty, and also dollar votes. Okay. Meaning to say that the freedom of choice for the cost customers will determine what goods will be produced. Okay, meaning to say if a customer or consumer doesn't like the existing product in the market, okay, and because of that, the, the product is not sold, right? Therefore, eventually the product will be no longer produced, okay? And a new product that suits the customer's taste will be produced, okay? So this happens because of the consumer, consumer's freedom to choose. To choose. But if the consumer doesn't have any choice and it is all determined by the government, Okay, then that will be that will be the outcome of the um, uh, command economy. Okay, so it will still be produced. The, the goods will be still be produced, but a good that may not fit with the consumer demand. Okay, um, another um, aspect of what will be produced is also what we call dollar votes. Okay, dollar votes. For example, if there are two similar products, one will eventually fail because it did not get enough sales. So in this case, the sales or revenue is termed as the dollar votes. Okay, it's as if you are voting for that for that thing. Right? So if you are voting for that thing, you are actually uh, or you, if you are paying for that thing, you're buying that thing, you, it is as if you are voting for that. So the more votes that the, the thing gets, the more it will, the more likely that it will remain in the market. Okay. So if the product does not get enough votes, it will eventually fail and it will cease to exist. Okay. So that is the dollar vote. Going to the Next part, next question is how will the goods be produced? Okay, so usually the to answer to answer this question, the different systems will actually try to minimize the cost by using the most efficient techniques. Okay, but of course, depending on the system, there will be different levels of technology. Okay, and also it will also affect the prices of raw material or necessary resources. Okay, so depending on that system, it will determine what is the uh, efficient technique and eventually what is the minim uh, minimum cost that it can, uh, it can bear. Okay, so that is question two. Okay, oh, so here, sorry. So here, for example, on the question of how will the goods be produced, Right. So depending on the system, they can use different techniques. They can use different techniques on how you allocate resources. Okay. Again, this is what we term as economic resources. Economic resources. Okay. As la la labor, land, capital, and also entrepreneurship. Okay. So these are economic resources. Okay. So this is basically what is being distributed, okay? For economy, this is what uh, is being distributed. How do you determine 
where labor goes, where land goes, where capital goes, where entrepreneurship goes. Okay, so you can use different techniques to decide how it will be produced and how to allocate. Okay, so for example, in technique one, they use four units of labor, one unit of land, one unit of capital, one unit of entrepreneurship, and the cost is 15. Technique three, they have different units for different components, different resources, but the cost will also be 15. If you use technique two, also different units for different components, different resources, but the cost will be 13. Okay, so eventually, the most cheapest technique will be used in order to produce the, here in this case, the pizza. Okay, so the Based on this, technique two will be choose, chosen, and because of it, uh, the cost is 13 and the, 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 the price of the pizza is 15, then you can get a profit of two. Okay, so this is basically answering just an example, a simple example of answering how will the goods be produced. Okay. And then uh, the next part is who will get the output? Okay. Uh, in a market system, Okay, basically, the principle of the market system is that whatever that is being produced, okay, and if the consumer is willing to pay for it, then he will be able to obtain the output. Okay, if, a, if a supplier supplies it, provides the output, but if the consumer doesn't want to pay for it or is not willing to pay for the, for the product, then the output will not be received by the consumer. Okay, so it depends as well on who get will get the output, or if there is a producer that produces a good, but then there uh, are too many people that want it. For example, there are ten units of, uh, let's say mobile phone. Okay, and however there are twenty people that want it. Right, so what will happen is that. Let's say the price of one mobile phone is 1000, okay, but there's only 10. And there are 20 people that want it. What will happen is that some will bid up the price, okay, whereby he says, okay, because I want it so much, I am willing to pay for the phone for 1100. Instead of 1000, I'll pay 1100 in order for me to, to guarantee uh, getting the phone. Okay, and another person will say, I will pay 1,200. Another person will say, I will pay 1,300, right? So this will depend on their income as well. Okay, depending on their income, the person that bids the highest, okay, the, the person that bids the highest will get the output. Okay, so uh, depending on the income, usually the, 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 the more uh, wealthy or the, the more well-off person can get the output okay and the um the remaining will be uh, given to to the to the less less uh, wealthy okay so this is part and parcel of market capitalism or market system and also capitalism system okay so we will look at this i think in the next uh, slide 